Wataru Endo was obviously a panic buy from Liverpool since the club was running out of time and options and needed a new defensive midfielder in the squad. However, the most unpredictable thing happened and in the last couple of months, Wataru Endo has become a key player for Liverpool this season and is playing a huge role in them challenging for the Premier League title. So, how did a 30-year-old defensive midfielder that was initially playing for a relegation-bound club in the Bundesliga become such an important player for this Liverpool team? Well, let's take a look at Wataru Endo this season. Real quick before we get on with the video guys, remember to follow my Twitter and Instagram, both at Nabuto, especially Twitter, since I'm close to 1,000 followers and I love tweeting about football. So if you have a Twitter account, feel free to hit me up with that follow. Thank you. Anyways, in order to give context to this entire situation, we need to look back to the previous season. In the 22-23 campaign, Liverpool failed to live up to their high expectations. After missing out on the quadruple by two games in the 21-22 season, Liverpool went trophyless in the 22-23 campaign and only managed to finish fifth in the Premier League, missing out on a Champions League spot. But this poor season taught Liverpool and Klopp a lot about what they needed to fix. The most glaring and obvious issue though was that Liverpool needed a midfield revamp. Liverpool's offense was fine, with them scoring a total of 75 goals in the league, the third highest out of any Premier League club in the 22-23 campaign. The problem was their lack of energy in the midfield and the laziness to help provide cover for the back line. With this, Liverpool conceded 47 goals, which was more goals conceded than 7th place Aston Villa, 9th place Brentford, the same goals conceded with 12th place Chelsea, and only 2 goals conceded less than 11th place Crystal Palace. Palace. Clearly, the entire Liverpool midfield needed a huge revamp, and that's exactly what happened in the summer. There was a huge exodus of Liverpool players leaving the club, especially in the midfield, and one of them was Fabinho, the main defensive midfielder who left to join Al Ittihad over in Saudi Arabia. This left a gaping hole in Liverpool's midfield, and a replacement was definitely needed in the summer. Liverpool knew this, and that's why for the longest time, they had their eyes on the young Romeo Lavia, the CDM for recently relegated Southampton. The thing is though, Southampton were hesitant to sell him for a price tag that wasn't around 50 million pounds, and Liverpool were not meeting that price tag. But then, out of almost nowhere, Liverpool switched targets and dropped an English record fee of 110 million pounds for Brian's Moises Caicedo, one of the most talented defensive midfielders in football, and Chelsea's transfer target the entire summer. However, even though it seemed like Liverpool got their new defensive midfielder, a huge twist happened, with Caicedo saying that he only wanted Chelsea and went to the London club for 110 million euros instead. So one defensive midfielder that Liverpool was targeting was now gone. But who cares though? Because we still got Romeo Lavia, right? Wrong. Because Chelsea took us trying to hijack the Caicedo deal personally and sign Romeo Lavia instead for 48 million euros. Oh no, no. This, this, this can't be. So, with the two defensive midfielders that we were targeting gone, who were we left with? Well, that's where Klopp comes in, because out of nowhere, he convinces the Liverpool hierarchy to make the cheap signing of Stuttgart's Wataru Endo, a 30-year-old Japanese defensive midfielder who helped Stuttgart survive relegation in the last Bundesliga campaign for just 15.4 million pounds. However, even though Liverpool signed a new defensive midfielder, it definitely seemed like Klopp and Liverpool were using him as a backup and not one of the main players for the team. This is because towards the start of the season, we were seeing a lot more of McAllister and Sobosly starting together, with Wataru Endo coming off the bench instead. But in the early stages of the season, some issues started to become more apparent. For example, the Liverpool midfield sort of struggled to find any sort of midfield balance. Back over in Brian, McAllister played much more in a double pivot, which gave him more freedom to go forward or stay back, etc. However, with Liverpool and playing with other attacking midfielders, like Sobosly for example, McAllister was playing alone as a 6, which was basically a new concept to him, and if he ever went too forward, this left a hole in Liverpool's midfield for the other team to capitalize on. Liverpool usually always found a way to clutch up and get a result, and that kind of calmed down the midfield struggles, but as the season progressed, the midfield issues only became more and more present on how imbalanced it actually was. But then, when Liverpool played Sheffield United away from home, everything changed with a sad injury from McAllister that would keep him out for a few weeks. Now obviously, you hate to see one of your own players getting injured, especially me because obviously I'm a Liverpool fan, duh. I wanted McAllister to stay fit, but this was a blessing for Endo, because before McAllister's injury, he only started two games in the Premier League. But after, Wataru Endo became much more of a consistent starter, and he made his presence known and made sure that he was basically undroppable from the squad. In the games with Taro Endo took a part in after that, he helped beat Sheffield United 2-0, started against Palace in the 2-1 win, played the 90 in the draws against Man United and Arsenal, also played the 90 in the 2-0 win away to Burnley, started the game against Newcastle where Liverpool won 4-2, and then in the Carabao Cup quarterfinals, with Taro Endo's 60-minute appearance helped Liverpool beat West Ham 5-1 on the day. So as you can see, with Wataru Endo acting as a defensive-minded player for the team, Liverpool have been doing really well and have gotten mainly wins when he starts. Also, before McAllister got injured, Endo came off the bench against 
against Fulham and scored a rocket in the dying minutes, playing a very big role in helping Liverpool come back 4-3. This just shows that Endo has that clutch factor to it. Plus, with Endo always being so defensive minded, he allows other players to freely attack even more. And this also includes Trent Alexander-Arnold, the attacking minded fullback who's been killing it this season offensively. And a huge reason for this is because Endo is always around to cover for him when he pushes forward. Trent Alexander-Arnold has always seen himself as a Kevin De Bruyne type midfielder, where he can allow passes for the attackers to feed off of and send in balls that nobody could imagine stopping. And one of the biggest reasons why this is happening much more this season is because of Endo, with his presence allowing Trent to push into the midfield like an inverted fullback and launch in those balls while Endo covers for him defensively. Not only that though, Endo's skill set perfectly fits with how Klopp wants to play. With Endo being the main tackler of the team, all he has to do is win his duels and give the ball to one of the other attacking midfielders, mainly Slobosly, to carry the ball forward. This helps Endo focus on what he has to do instead of trying to do everything for the team. He has one role to focus on and he's very good at doing that. Moving on to the more advanced stats to truly show how pivotal Endo has been for Liverpool, the Guardian has revealed that with Endo in the starting 11, Liverpool's goals conceded per game record drops from 1.08 to only 0.43 thanks to the Japanese midfielder's presence in the midfield. On a similar topic, when Endo has a starter for Liverpool, the team concedes around 4.2 shots a game, but with Endo on the pitch, it only becomes around 2.7 shots per game, decreasing the amount of shots by almost double. If you're not convinced about Endo's defensive prowess so far for Liverpool this season, let me throw some more stats at you to convince you otherwise. Wataru Endo puts up an average of around 2.2 tackles per 90, ranking 5th of all Liverpool players in the Premier League this season, and thanks to Endo's calming presence in the middle of the pitch, he's very good at helping Liverpool keep possession, returning a total of 62.5 passes per 90, and having an 85.7% pass success rate at that. Additionally, Endo is ranked in the 89th percentile for defensive actions, being in the 81st percentile for interceptions, 92nd percentile for ground duels 1, and despite his rather small height, 510 compared to other defenders, he's in the 77th percentile of aerial duels 1. If you look at some of Liverpool's most recent games where Endo has played, you can see that his presence is being felt strongly. In the game against Arsenal, Endo almost single-handedly neutralized the Arsenal midfield, and this allowed Liverpool to get the ball back and attack Arsenal. Endo's perfect defensive positioning ensured that whenever Liverpool put numbers into the attack, Arsenal's counterattack would be nullified thanks to Endo always being so defensive-minded. This game fully just showed how defensively capable Endo is, but in the game against Newcastle, this became even more apparent because due to Endo's intelligent defending and positioning, his involvement helped Liverpool achieve a historic SG of over 7 when Liverpool beat Newcastle 4-2. These last couple of performances show why Endo has become such a valuable asset for Liverpool and why he's probably being missed more heavily than Salah right now while both of the players are out on international duty, with Salah playing for Egypt and AFCON and Endo with Japan in the Asian Cup, where he also managed to score against Iraq by the way. With Liverpool currently being in the driver's seat in the Premier League title race, a lot of credit has to go to Wataru Endo, who is the unsung hero of the side. He's a rather simple player who doesn't really try too much and only does what he needs to do defensively and offensively to help the team. He never tries to become the star player and would rather be in the shadows doing the dirty work for his other teammates to claim the glory higher up on the pitch. With Wataru Endo being 30 years old, he has plenty of experience that helped him be this way. And with Endo having a book and a website where he talks about his style in football and why he plays the way he does, you can tell that Endo loves being a student of the game and he's obsessed with football. And this is exactly the type of player that I want Liverpool to employ. Not only that, massive credit has to be given to Jurgen Klopp as well, because we all, including myself, doubted him when he signed Endo after losing out on two star future CDMs. But when he said, All of us Liverpool fans laughed, but now look at us. We're the foolish ones. While Klopp once again proves how smart he actually is. It's crazy because out of all the signs we made this summer, it genuinely could be possible that the most important one was with our endo. And if we end up winning the Premier League, a huge reason would be because of him. Anyways, what are your guys' thoughts on with our endo this season? Let me know down in the comments. And before you comment, Nabuto, you sound hella sick. It's because I am, bro. I, I got really sick recently, which is also why this video was kind of delayed. But I'm back now, and hopefully my voice returns back to normal because this is kind of annoying, I'll be honest. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And please be sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram. The links are in my YouTube description. And last but not least, if you want to learn more about the Ghanaian star boy in the Premier League, Mohamed Kudus, you definitely want to check out this video right here. You won't regret it.